with my life is a miracle. Every child has a story of, of God's love to share. Shalom world, tune into God's love story. When I see the small children, I feel very happy. When they are crying or when they are screaming, I will go to them. I will try to give them my love to care like a mother. I will feel the love of God. Sometimes the children are abandoned because of poverty of mothers and family members. Sometimes they are abandoned in the hospitals where they are delivered. Sometimes they are abandoned in the roadside bushes. Sometimes because of irritation in the heart, depression, the mothers cannot tolerate the child crying of hunger. Maybe we cannot blame these mothers or parents. They may be hungry, they may be poor, they cannot meet the expenses of these children. If we hear the stories of the children, it is very difficult to understand their lives. We we'll approach them and reach them through our apostolate, through education, through prayer, through healing ministry, through social apostolate, where we take care of orphan and abandoned children infected and affected with HIV AIDS. There was an anxiety in our heart how to cope up with all this to give them joy in their life. Like a friend, like a counselor, like a mother, with much patience we listen to them. We give a positive outlook on life to everyone who are in need. Jesus gave me health and wealth. My wealth is my sisters in the province. Even at the cost of their life, that they want to love Jesus above everything. They are specially chosen by Jesus to make them adorable for the world. Together we pray 
Together we live and together we work. The people here are ours and we are for them. Our congregation, Sisters of the Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, was founded by Venerable Mar Thomas Kuryalasheri, together with the co-founders, Mother Mary Francisca de Chandal, the Servant of God. Our founder had a deep inspiration, which is very personal, with Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, and inspired him to make known the Eucharistic Lord to the end of the world, that the people should adore, love, in all place, always and everywhere. And this was the dream of our founder, inspired with that dream. To fulfill that dream, we started the East African Mission in 1994. We are sisters living in 21 communities. When we come out here, we selected East Africa as our mission area, including three countries, Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. When we came first, the language is different, climate is different, people are different, culture is different, everything. There was an anxiety in our heart how to cope up with all this. Our charism is Eucharistic adoration and Eucharistic devotion. It is also known single-minded devotion to the Holy Eucharist. We have four perpetual adoration centers in East Africa, where in that community, sisters are adoring Jesus from morning till evening. Sometimes day and night adoration will be there. During this adoration, sisters will pray for the whole world in reparation for the sins of the world, for the glory of God, for the needs of the people, and for everything in this world. The late Bishop of Eldorate, Bishop Korir, requested us to make a children's home, to bring the orphaned and sick children 
and also the abandoned ones, to take care of them, to give them a life, to give them joy in their life. So we started that building in Kimomo Eldoret. In the beginning, we were also finding it difficult. But today, that is a home for us. We got at present 45 children, babies, infants, and school-going children. Sometimes we get the children at, the, at our gate, somebody abandoned the gate without uh, clothes or anything. They are shivering, we take care of them. They are, we are receiving premature babies also with the 1.5 kilo. Then we take, we, it needs a lot of concentration, close observation. Gradually they are getting weight, they are gaining weight. We are taking care of them, we are happy because we are saving the life. We, when we see small babies, we have an image of baby Jesus. We are taking care of that we, we have got a baby Jesus. Many of the children, they were so much, they don't like to expose themselves. Like when the visitors come, they decide to run to the dormitory to hide themselves because they don't like to associate with people. We hear many things from these children, the difficulties they face in their homes, the difficulties they face along the road and in the school in the hospital, in the places where they are. Like a friend, like a counselor, like a mother, with much patience, we listen to them. We take care of the children, the old, the sick, especially the physically challenged children in small homes. They are, there are children without hands, they do everything with their legs. We have children blind, still helped by others. So these children, majority of them, they are hidden in their homes. The parents, they are not exposing them. They feel like it is a curse from God, and they, this makes them to hide them in their houses without exposing them. So we started uh, doing the services to these disabled children, going to their home visit and uh, bringing them and uh, encouraging the parents that it is not a curse, but it's a gift from God. And from then, the parents now started bringing the children to their small home. Culturally, people fear to interact with children like that, with the people, the children with disability. But with the children, sisters of the adoration of the Blessed Eucharist, they go deep to meeting their parents and having meetings with the children and the parents to make them understand each other and to help one another in this difficult moment. Formation of the children, academically and spiritually, and to also helping the children interact and have uh, to be accepted in the community. And all these children are very happy. And the sisters are there like a father, like a mother, like a friend, they are there. And the majority of them, it is not that they are physically, they are only physically challenged, but outside mentally, they are really very proud. Most of these children, they are actually very happy 
they were joyful despite of their disabilities. Sisters here are also running the school, an academy you have in the parish. So some of the children are studying, taking their studies at the Immaculate Heart of Mary, uh, run by Adoration Sisters of the Blessed Eucharist, and also we have a local primary school. Also the help whereby they have made connection. We have those who are sponsoring the children in the academy, so they have made a wide connection to help the children. We does educating the children who are in the poor and needy places. There we consider everyone as our own. We look for their health, we look for their spiritual needs, we look for their intellectual needs, and we help them in every way to study so that they could come up with a good result, they can attain a job, and be a good life. We teach them and tell them they are gifted. God has given you so many talents. Share it and teach them you are for others. You are for the whole world. We give them chances to join a retreat and help them to grow in faith. We show them Jesus in the Holy Eucharist which is the soul power of life. Through their counseling and uh, being with them always, playing with them, uh, giving them some spiritual exercises, and uh, being so close to them, these children, majority of them, they have exposed, they have accepted to be with the people, and to experience the love that others are giving them. All together we make a family there, meeting the needs of the children, make them happy and a life which is full of hope. We also increase their faith and trust in the Lord so that they will have a hope in their life. Together we eat, together we pray, Together we play and be happy and sleep peacefully. My name is Sister Lilia Rose, Adoration Sister. I come from Kisi Diocese, the western part of the country. I, I did my schooling and I graduated from the University of Nairobi with Bachelor of Science in Chemistry and Zoology. And I got a job with the government in the Ministry of Agriculture Veterinary Department. After two years, I decided to go back to do my master's degree in applied parasitology. While I was doing my master's, I was feeling a deep desire to pray, to speak to God. And that's when a friend of mine invited me to a prayer house, Venetian Prayer House, Lovington. I went for a one prayer day service. And in that prayer, I was really attracted to adoration and the preaching of the Word of God. That much attraction I had, and I decided to go for the retreat. In that retreat, I got an inspiration of 
the word of God, Psalms 45, verse 11 and 12. Listen, my daughter, and understand. Pay me careful heed. Forget your people and your father's house, that the king might desire your beauty. He is your Lord, honor him. That word changed my life. And they confirmed that I have a vocation. I have a vocation to religious life. Then from there, I was invited to adoration congregation. That is where I, I attended adoration and I saw Jesus is the answer that I've been searching for. We have to promote local vocations. We are starting for children who love Eucharistic adoration, who love to learn and study and train ourselves to do and continue the work. But we together sat and thought of it. We appointed in each community one sister who is responsible for this vocation promotion. And in the province also there is a vocation leader. We tell them, if you like adoration, if you want to be together with Jesus and work for Him, if you want to be together with sisters, please come. What I found and experienced is, every year we get more and more children. It was not easy, especially for the family that has educated me this much. It was not easy for them, but I felt that desire in me, a push from my heart, telling me this is the way, this is your life. They are very open that they want to love Jesus above everything and love the people of God. Even at the cost of their life, they are ready to do this. In the government, that is all about position, it's all about money, it's all about power. But in the hidden life, I have chosen Jesus, who came down, up, down from heaven to lead a simple life, a hidden life in Nazareth. That is the Jesus I have chosen. And that gives me joy to follow him. Going through formation, it's an exciting experience, healing, being corrected, being trained as an adorer. And the most exciting experience is in novitiate. Because in the novitiate, we spend more time in prayer before Jesus. That is when I went deep down within myself, to know myself, to know who I am, to know who God is, and to know the congregation. I see a God who has accepted me the way I am. I saw I was running away from God, but that God kept on running after me. And they ran faster than me, and they got me back. After cancelling all my interests, I see my life, my, myself so small. If that pleases Jesus for me to do the humble works in the convent, that simplicity I felt in my heart made me tell my superior whatever he wants me to do, to lead a hidden life. I no longer need to go to the public. I can do the simple work in the convent. I can cook for the sisters. I can clean the convent. I can do garden work. That is enough for me, as long as I have time to be with my Jesus. My consecration means I have totally given God everything, my time, my life, everything. I have nothing on my own. It is God. All these candidates coming to us, they are specially chosen by Jesus to make them adorer for the world, for the glory of God and for the congregation. So together we pray, together we live, together we eat, and together we work. Now we have 30 sisters, both perpetually professed and temporarily professed. These 30 sisters are gems in our congregation.
The general aid will help financially with the personals and whatever we need, they help us. They encourage us for building up new stations, taking up new apostolate. Since general aid cannot afford all these alone, they called all the provinces. All of them came with helping hand. They helped us to build our houses, to educate our candidates, to meet every expenses that is happening here. Financially, our main support is from the parish. Small Christian communities, they are coming with the gifts, donations and everything. Sometimes uh, people are coming to celebrate their birthday with them. Especially in Christmas season, they are very much interested to take care of our children. They are saying, you have everything at home, you want to share what we have with these children. If I could say the whole of East Africa, where we are, in Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda, the people are very good, so generous and loving, ready to help in all means to help us to do this good work for the people around. We are very happy and uh, we thank God for, the, for them coming here. It is a blessing for us as a parish and it's a blessing, most importantly, for the children who are here, who have their touch each and every day. And when we reach all these places, there are situations which we cannot meet. But we get a strength from Eucharistic adoration. When we go after Eucharistic adoration, we feel that we are carrying Jesus in the classroom, in the hospital, in the dispensaries, in the prison, in all the place we go and meet people and we could give Jesus to them and make them happy, which we personally cannot, but Jesus does that. Jesus in the Holy Eucharist is the solution to all problems. Jesus in the Holy Eucharist is the answer to all questions. He can do anything and everything if we trust Him and love Him. So we give a positive outlook on life to everyone who are in need, who are in difficulty, and who are depressed. We feel very happy in this country where we are working. The people here are ours, and we are for them. To us sisters, when we look at our life, apart from the help we receive from the people, we are with Jesus. When we come for night adoration and night prayer, we could just see the whole day guided, led, promoted by Jesus to help us, give us strength and courage to deny, to take up and to do it. He does everything. He decides everything. We are given all the chances and opportunities to proclaim him as the Lord and Master of our mission in East Africa.
Amanda Markeski for Shalom World Television. I'm one of the many who love this 24-7 mission-driven family channel. The channel that brings the peace of Christ to over 375 million English-speaking people all over the world. I want to share a simple message of gratitude for your prayers and generous support. I also want to share some exciting news. We've just passed the threshold of reaching almost 3 million households. Our presence on social media continues to grow. We now have close to half a million Facebook followers. You already experience the difference that Shalom World makes. And you probably know that what we do is the result of your prayers and your financial support. We can't do this without you. Our 1,000 plus original programs have been made possible because you watch, you pray, and you support us so generously. But all this good news is not the full story. Television production requires creative, technical, and financial resources. Sometimes the challenges of making ends meet seem overwhelming. When many disciples abandoned Jesus, our Lord asked Peter if he too would go. St. Peter replied, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. This truth is why we're here, to help share the life-giving word, Christ himself with all the world. Shalom World continues its mission because the Holy Spirit inspires us, sustains us, and inspires you to work with us. So let me ask you, are you willing to help enrich and transform people's lives? Will you help us continue our media apostolate? Below is a link that will direct you to our donation site. There are a few options, so please find one that works best for you. If you can't donate right now, please continue to support us with your prayers. On behalf of Shalom World, thank you for helping us spread the gospel. Know that we pray for you daily, and may God bless you abundantly.